we're here at the Dana Center, which is part of the Science Museum for Beatbox Laboratory. And basically we're going to be doing some live experiments on beatboxers. We've got um, some guys, volunteers, they're going to have a couple of battles and we've hooked them all up to this monitoring equipment so we can find out what's really going on in the beatboxer's mind, body and brain. Okay, so um, my work at Imperial is uh, looking at uh, physiological aspects of anxiety. Um, and I guess normally with anxiety, uh, you look at people's behavior, um, you might ask them for some feedback and uh, how they feel and how anxious they felt. Uh, musicians make especially good subjects for a study of anxiety because I think there are a few activities that induce anxiety better than having to perform music in front of an audience. Um, so we're going to connect these guys up to um, a few instruments that will be measuring various parameters while they um, battle it out in a second. Um, there are three measurements we're going to be taking. Uh, we're going to be looking at their heart rate using an ECG, uh, which you've probably all seen at some stage in your life. It gives a little spikes that go beep, beep, beep. Um, we're also going to be looking at their breathing movements um, with a strap around their chest, which will be measuring um, the expansion um, of their chest movements. Um, the other measurement is um, galvanic skin response, and that's a measure of how much you sweat, how much you perspire. Um, so it's a couple of uh, metal plates attached to the fingers, and essentially it's just measuring uh, resistance through the skin. So if you're sweating more, um, there'll be less resistance because the uh, current will be able to travel through the sweat in your skin. We've also taken some uh, self-report feedback from them before the performance to see how nervous they felt. So it'll be interesting to see perhaps whether um, the person who felt um, psychologically more nervous was more had a higher heart rate, or whether you know whether there's any link there. Um, so yeah, we're going to connect these guys up. Um, as to uh, mentally what's going on with these guys as they're performing. So we've been looking a lot at uh, physiologically what's happening, both uh, internally and uh, well, externally a little bit as well. Um, but I'm curious as to what's going on internally uh, inside their minds here. As Evan mentioned before, I, I had these two guys actually fill out um, a questionnaire for me, asking about uh, their thoughts or how anxious they were actually feeling, but also looking at their confidence a little bit as well. Now what we found is, I would have said that your, your heart rate was a little bit higher for the most part. 
breathing rates for both of you are all over the place, but that isn't necessarily indicative of what was actually going on. Your uh, skin conductance started fairly high, or well not fairly high, but higher, but, but then it dropped as, as you were going along as well. When you're first starting out in a competition or something, you get into it, you're a little bit nervous, you're worked up, but then as you get going and get along into it, everything starts to calm down a little bit, and you relax okay. Now what's interesting is that even though Eddie you have a, a higher heart rate, uh, his, his feedback, his, uh, his, his thoughts before on the questionnaire actually had him or his uh, anxiety symptoms rated as lower than MCLDs. <clears throat> Which, not, not a huge difference necessarily, but it's interesting to see that what, what they felt within themselves um, was actually different than what we, what we saw up on the screen. Now, of course, they didn't know how the other was feeling, so they, they weren't comparing themselves to each other. What Evan's showing, uh, what all of this uh, this physiological data shows us it is very hard uh, empirical data as to what's actually going on within these guys. Uh, the feedback results um, are just just a perception as to how how they think they feel. Um, although the key thing with this is that how you think you feel probably has a bigger response in your ability to perform um, than what's actually going on inside you.